Oh yeah, without further ado, here is Adam Silver. And I just tumble 
and go. No helmet, no wrist guards, my, my iPhone's in my pocket, I'm wearing shorts, t-shirt. Only benefit was I was wearing sneakers, not flip-flops. And I'm just tumbling from the middle of the street to the intersection. I get up, and luckily I don't have to fall. I've fallen a lot. Because as you can see, I did that. Not all from this accident. This is just the first 10 years of my life. My parents love me. They really do, trust me. So I get up, and the most embarrassing part was not the fall, not the fall, it was the getting up in the middle of the intersection with a mom pushing a stroller. Another dad in the, in the, in the, in the intersection of in the, in the, his car, steering wheel, and that look of, really? <laughs> You're like 40 something. But this is wrong. What are you thinking? Yeah, I get up, I limp, I'm like, bloody rocks in my side, I go back to my house, yeah. I still am deformed on the left side. It's been like two years later. I haven't been back on the skateboard yet. Um, yeah, so, at that moment I realized, I mean, at 10 years of age when I was really bad, I realized, I'm so bad I'm not gonna be a pro skateboarder. But I love being around movie sets. And I love that whole make-believe and that thing. Uh, I was like, this is, this is what I wanna do. I'm already gonna pivot. At 10, I'm making my first pivot. Because what I love most about being around movies was craft services. <laughs> you get fed, you get dressed, you get makeup done. This is the bomb. So my first thought was, I'm gonna be an actor. You know, after after skateboard, I'm gonna be a child star. My parents disagreed completely. But the reason I wanted to be a child star was the attention. You know, and I really wanted that. Next point, I'm right here. No, it's not totally true. And then one day I figured, well, I'll study this, I'll learn this trade, and I will be welcomed into the world of uh, Leo. Okay. So right up, right up front, up front, 10 years old, I made a pivot. Okay, keep that in mind, it's part of this, uh, this little journey point. So my next, what's next then? Cut to about seven years later, now I'm about 17, and I go to college. So a lot of people have experiences and they tell stories that college were the best years of their life. How many people went to college? Most of you, that's awesome. How many people have great <coughs> memories? How many people still have best friends from college? So I do have some of those. But my first college experience wasn't as good. Well, that's really kind of pixelated. Sorry about that. Wasn't so great. First and foremost, I went to junior college. And nothing wrong with junior college. So I went to Pierce Junior College in uh, Woodland Hills, California. One of the hot beds of uh, the pits of the Valley Railroad. Like, literally hot. In the summer, 110 degrees. It's dry heat, I know. No humidity, I get it. <laughs> but apparently, I enrolled. And I kind of went to class. But I didn't really attend. You know what I mean? My best friend went to school at a four-year university. I lived at home. I was at his university every weekend, feeling like Stephen Harvey is right now. He's hung over. <laughs> so, apparently, if you don't really do well, they kick you out, even from a junior college. No matter how bad you think you have it, I have it worse. If you get under a 2.0, for three semesters in a row, I was consistent. I had consistency on my side. And I'll tell you, at 17 years old, when I went to college, I was one of those younger high school graduates, that what any 17-year-old would do is I would blame somebody else. Easy. It wasn't my fault I did bad. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. And it wasn't yours. I didn't know these people. But I blamed everybody else except myself. I blamed the counselor who misguided me on taking sociology and psychology and art history. Because who needs those things in life? Who's a psych major? Who was a psych major? <laughs> Only one. Yeah. Nice. See? So who needs it? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I blame my dad's massive coronary heart attack. I said, I told the counselors, I'm like, hey, my dad's heart attack must have affected my studies. Truly. He had a massive coronary heart attack, and it was bad. I'm going to get a sip of water here one second. That's not a good idea. Actually, I'll put it right here. So, blaming my dad's heart attack. I blame my dad for a lot of stuff. Mostly good. So, I ended up writing a letter of help to the university, to the junior college. I said, look, clearly there's a misunderstanding here. I can pass classes, I thought. So I write a letter of appeal, and I ask for help. And I, and I indicate these things. The misguidance counselor, dad's heart attack. And they agree with me. I said, okay, Mr. Silver, Adam, we'll let you back in. 
but we're going to give you limited to unit status, LU status. And it's only because I mentioned this to them. I found this in the handbook of college um, rules and regulations that we had under 2.0, three years, three semesters in a row. You can write this letter of LU, and they'll let you back in. But they only let me take two classes a semester for a year to get my grades back up. That would be, if you couldn't do that, then you were done. You were not going to go to junior college. So I did that. And it was great, I got my grades back up and I transferred. And to transfer to a four-year university in California back then, you had to have a 2.0 and 56 transferable units. I was awesome. I had a 2.01 and 58 units. So no university in California could turn me down. So I thought, they actually did, they all four turned me down when I transferred, wrote a letter saying, look, my transcripts need to be updated, and they got me back in. So I ended up going to San Diego State. I had a great time at San Diego State, where eventually I studied theater. So I'm on track. The pivot from 10 to college is on track. I went to theater school. What I think might have helped with that letter of appeal was that my dad lived. So, I'm not, so I don't know. I didn't mention it. So he's seven, no, he's 87. That was about uh, six months ago. He's doing great. Still practicing law, because if he didn't practice law every day, he'd be in prison for killing my mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So what's next? So again, some, some transitions in my life, some hurdles, if you will, right? And I blame my, let's go back to what my dad said. He's a sole provider. He runs his own shop. And that's a problem from my perspective. Which might make sense later. My next. So the next part of my life kind of goes by in a heartbeat. First, after college, I, there's an earthquake in LA. 1994, there's a bigger earthquake in LA. My plans to move back to LA and become an actor are kind of put on hold. I moved to San Francisco because I have an opportunity just to get out of LA. I cannot live with my parents. How many people went back home after college to live with family? Yeah. How many people still live? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> I did. I, I had to go back home live with my parents. I didn't have to, but that was not the plan. That was to get an apartment with my best friend, start my acting career, and you know, do all that. Earthquake changed all that. So I moved to San Francisco. I fall in love. I meet my future wife. I have some day jobs. I do some stuff. I do some acting work. I do what I have to do to pay the bills, right? I then move back to Hollywood because I'm at a point now where I know I really want to pursue the acting. I really want to do this. So we go back to Hollywood, and as you can see, I took it seriously. Yeah, it's me without a beard. And that was just last week. <laughs> or not. It's a long time ago. Man, that was, I, had a, I had a look, didn't I? I don't say it's a good one, but it's a look, right? I pursue the acting. I get married, that's my wedding photo. We buy a house, we have some kids, we sell a house because again, LA is really expensive and we sold on the high end of the market. We moved to Colorado and at this point, right before Colorado started company number 29, who knows what it was, honestly, I've had a lot of jobs in my life, a lot of companies, but I really started these companies, Silverlight Productions, Silverlight Photography. And I split them because people don't want to know you do two things. So I had to have two brands, okay? And things are going okay, but now it's 2009, uh, right? Nope, 2005, sorry, 2005. And the economy's about to tank. No one's fault, just stuff happens. So what do we do? We have another kid. <laughs> that was a, that was a awesome. You know, he is now 13 years old. And that's right then, right after he was born, economy tanks. Business dries up. Uh, Photography, video, no one's looking to do it. Websites, I'm doing like 10% of web work, mostly Dreamweaver, HTML, no WordPress at this time, because now it is 2009. And I get offered an awesome job, the dream job of a lifetime. I'm going to host a show on the web. I can tell you the name, it's actually on YouTube, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm talking on camera about technology. My two loves, I love technology, maybe more than skateboarding, and I love to be on camera. And we move. We sell a house. We move back to South Bay, uh, Los Angeles, Manhattan Beach. That's Manhattan Beach here. Things are looking great, right? I'm now going to make a lot of money and be a director of a company. Another pivot, another economy's here. I get an opportunity. I go with it. Just kind of keep going the path, right? My next. I'm in seventh heaven. I'm doing what I really want to do. Of course, it doesn't always end up that way. I'm laid off nine months later. I moved from Colorado back to California. I, they paid the move, they paid me a lot of money, and now I'm stuck in LA. I'm just stuck. I don't know what to do with myself. So I do what everyone else does. I start my company again. You know? And this time I focus solely on photography. Because that's 
what I want to do. I'm doing more photography now than at that time than anything else. And photography, I didn't have a website. So because I lost a bet a year earlier, I knew uh, about Joomla. So um, I, did, I spent six, six weeks dating her. It didn't end well. So with that in mind, I built a site in WordPress. My life has never been the same since. I just dive in. I look at it. I figure out a theme I want to use. And this is only for photography, mind you. I make okay. Actually, I found other photographer websites that I like to look up. And I kind of copied one who was in Florida. I'm in LA. He's in Florida. He does commercial work. I do portraits. He'll never find me. <laughs> now I saw it. And it's true. He never found me. Of course, I launched my site. I'm like, I have a new website. Hire me. Crickets. As you know, having a website isn't everything. It's part of the equation, part of your business plan, right? So I then start building websites for other parents who I met through soccer, through uh, baseball, my kids, or basketball, or through the school, PTSA stuff. I start building sites. And then people say, can you teach us a website? I'm like, sure. So I start teaching sites. Excuse me. And in that time frame, I then find out about WordCamps. WordCamps are awesome. I asked the question earlier, how many times have you guys been? I started by going to two, um, these two. Uh, we're Camp LA, we're Camp Orange County. I missed out on Orange County to buy a ticket. It's uh, one of the most popular ones out there, and it sells out like within hours, typically. I got lucky, a sponsor gave me a ticket. I'm like, who does that? Who's, who gives away tickets? I mean, I know it's only 40 bucks or 20 bucks per day, but I get, a I get a ticket. And I'm there, I'm like, you guys, I'm enthralled. These are my people. I want to do that. I want to help people be people. But I was really desperate for work. And as I told someone earlier this morning, desperation for work reeks really bad. I was that guy. Hi, I'm Adam. Can I help you? What do you guys do? Can I help? I want to do something. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> Wasn't pretty. It takes time. You gotta build trust. And then I went to LA, and again, I was a volunteer, and I was a volunteer photographer because that's how my entry into WordPress was through photography. And then, I don't know, how many people here know the name Chris Lama? How many people never heard of him? Let's do that one. More people, okay, which is interesting. So Chris Lama is a personality of WordPress. He's a speaker. He does strategy. Super nice guy. My personal take, first initial impression of him was, who is this guy? He vlogs every day. Yeah, he did. He was vlogging every day for about two or three years. He put in the time. And he put in so much time in this community of WordPress and WordCamps that people, this community, got together about five years ago and bought him a Mac Pro. The first, the cylinder one that came out, the black one, bought him a Mac Pro. And my mind is blowing up. I'm out of work. I have no money. My marriage is close to being over, seriously. Uh, if he has a job, why would people do that? It's based on community. It's based on what he gave back. And I got really pissed, really bitter, really angry. Wasn't in a good space. Until I met him. Couldn't be nicer. Really, people really annoyed me when I met how I met him. Super bad. <laughs> Not only that, he hired me. <laughs> yeah, great, thanks. I want to hate you, but now you're paying me. So he hired me, and I shoot <coughs> for Camp Orange County 2015 or 16 for him, for his own photos. So the photos you see on his website, a lot of them I took. So I came in to WordPress as a photographer, 90% of my time, 10% WordPress. Over the years, very few people know that I was a photographer. That's some talk offline. I don't mention it, my website for photography. Uh, it's actually down. It says coming soon, as it's as said for years now. It actually was hacked, which I let it get hacked. I was curious how they would do it. It's fascinating how that happens. <laughs> but I don't recommend it. Update your plugins, update your things, okay? <laughs> so here I am, mad, angry, angry white guy. There's a song called Angry White Guy by Jim's Big Ego. Check it out. That was me. I was an angry white guy. Can't fault a man for doing the work. Anybody for that matter. You can't fault people for putting in the time and doing the work. Okay. So I was at a crossroads. What am I going to do? So, my next was suck it up, get a day job, do what I had to do, wait some tables, do some internet marketing for a company that was very toxic and just not a good, happy place to be. But I did what I had to do. And during that time, I started reading a lot more books. Starting with Start With Why. How many people heard this book? Great. So the basic concept is, start with why. Why is it we do what we do, right? Apple's perspective. They do it from great user experience, great interface, um, Elegant and uh, amazing design. That's their why. And they move outward from that way. There's a TED talk on this. Simon Sinek is great. And my why, I can see my slide. What's this? When I realized what I had to 
lose. Is what I got serious. Every time I practice, it's the same thing happening. So I'm not surprised it's happening. So just you know. <laughs> okay, moving past it. Okay. And so I was seriously when I talked talk about my marriage being here, it, it, it wasn't good. This year will be 20 years. We we pushed through it. So thanks. <laughs> this this year, so the, the bad part was years 13, 14, 15. We're not good. Communication and money, number two, two top reasons why people get divorced. My dad's a lawyer. You would think I would know this. <laughs> I wasn't so I thought it was adultery and other stuff. Communication and money. Can I communicate expectations? Talk about it. If you're married, do that. Okay. Um, so when I knew what I could lose, that's where I got serious. And I also read the one thing. Anyone know about this book? <coughs> this is by Gary Keller and um, Jay Papasson. Papasson. Gary Keller's Keller Williams Real Estate, being on the West Coast. And his belief, his take on it is you can do one thing, you cannot multitask. Okay? You have to have one thing. And I have one thing, along with my other hundred things. But my one thing right now, the new iteration of what I do right now for the past 18 months, is I, I relaunched uh, a company I divided some things up, and I relaunched 18 months ago, and I went full-time, September 2nd, 2016. And that's, and that's, that's Concierge WP. And I have other things, but every day this is my one thing. Okay? I focus on this every day. I show up and I do the work. You know, because, and well, that would be crazy. Actually, I thought I was showing up and doing the work. And I kind of was, kind of wasn't. So Einstein has the quote, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Right? I, love, I love Einstein, one of my heroes. And I realized in the first six or seven months that I thought I was doing what I needed to do. I was kind of putting it out there, cold calling, cold emailing, finding the leads, scattershot, almost a shotgun approach, using Trello but not follow up, no follow up. So I had the epiphany to where I asked other people in our space who are doing the job I'm trying to do better. They're doing better than I am. There's plenty of work. I'm not, I'm not opposed to any of us doing the same thing because there's 90 million websites. We can't take it all. Well, I can't take it all. I'm not willing to. I, I, I want to make that balance in my life. So I asked them what they're doing different. And I just kind of looked at them. I talked to three friends of mine who I trust their opinion. And they're using productivity tools consistently. So I dove in. I picked up Productivity Planner. And this is not a pitch for them. I just, this is what I use every day. It's in my bag. It's over here. If you guys want to see it later, I'll show you. I use a productivity, productivity Planner. And I also use a CRM. And those two things, in the last six months since I moved to the East Coast, have made the biggest change in my career. And such a big change that my wife, who I've tried to include in my businesses over the last 20 years, 23 years, 20 years of marriage, I, I realized what I learned about my wife is that she doesn't care about my ideas. Not in a negative way. I would say, hey, how should I bid this? How should I propose this? How should I shoot this for a photo shoot stuff or build a site? And she's like, I don't know. I want her part of it. She doesn't care. She wants to. We have rent or mortgage covered, health insurance, and food in the fridge. And I get that now. I really do. I really get it now. But she asked me two weeks ago. She literally said, "Why now?" She, when she's doing dishes, I'm helping clean up the kitchen table. She goes, "Adam, why are you getting business now?" And I said, "Do you really want to know?" And she gave me the look like, "Maybe." <laughs> and I didn't want because I can get into the weeds. I can dive into the weeds and tell you every little thing I do my day to day. I, I have no problem sharing. It, trust me. So I think about her a second, she's looking at me, and I say, because I use systems, and I hold myself accountable every day. And that's all. I don't say CRM, I don't say the productivity plan. She's not going to care. She goes, I don't care. I use a system. So that's part of it. And then it got me thinking that entrepreneurship is hard. It's work. And that brings it to us to right now, the last six months. Business is on the upswing. I run an agency. Actually, I tell people now, they, they ask me, what do you do? I say, I do business development for a small agency. And I, and I stop. Because if I say I also run a podcast, I do two podcasts, I have a subsidiary. If I do too much, people go, ah, oh, too much. So I, I, I do business development for, the, for a small web agency. It's my agency. You don't need to know that. I'm not trying to brag. And I can build or I can sell. I'd rather sell. I'd rather build relationships and help solve the problem and then have a team that I brought on to do the rest of it. That's how I see it. Can I build as well? Sure. Um, one of the guys that does the work for me, I do what he does without question. The other two guys, I have no idea what they do. I just know that they're really smart, and that's the key. The difference between agency and non-agency is more work than you can handle, bring it on help. Freelance, full-time, doesn't matter how you bring it in, 
That's just the definition of taxes. 1099 or not, I don't care about that. So I'm an agency, the accidental agency. It just happened in the last six months because of being accountable, because I didn't want to lose what I have to lose. And it's not all roses, it's not all pretty. I've lost work, um, people aren't happy sometimes, putting up fires. And just to show you how it's not all roses, is this was uh, February 22nd, my dad's birthday actually. A friend of mine posted on Twitter about crying. He's a, a male, watched, some, watched the movie, had a good cry. I replied to him in a DM. And I, I crossed out the bad word because I didn't want to offend anybody. But it says, truth be told, I feel like I could lose my beep at any minute. Just the basics of life, work, family, money, all of it. Just figured this was a decent, safe place to share. Yes, okay, me, outgoing, people, person, yes. But mentally, I'm due, breathe, not say. That's what I was feeling. It's what I feel all the time. Man, all the time. So, with that said, what's your next? Your next is different than mine, than yours, than yours, than yours. Every day, as an entrepreneur, if you want to run your own day to day, you have to do the work. My goal today is to inspire you. It's hard work. You can also be a great entrepreneur, an employee. And that's what I'm saying. My, the blame I give my dad, which is out of love, is he's a sole proprietor attorney. He, did, he worked for a small loan firm for a year and then went on his own. And I always saw that. And I'm like, that's what I want. I want to do my own thing. I want my own, I just want to call my own shots. I make it okay, employee. If you're hiring for a lot of money, let me know. <laughs> but I just feel like I have more control of my day to day, but it takes work. Being an entrepreneur, it also reminds me of the, um, the image you'll see with um, uh, the iceberg. The little bit of up top, tongue on the bottom. Where I'm at right now didn't happen overnight. It's been 18 months, two years of making. Okay? It, it's, I'm so not perfect that ConstructWP.com is down right now because the site was old. I was losing business because of what the offers were there. We took it down. We are redeveloping it. It's supposed to go live last Monday. It's not live because I'm not perfect. It's a matter of Priorities. It needs to go. So if anyone's not busy today, they can do my site. Okay. <laughs> now, leave you this last piece here. To quote by John F. Kennedy. Was this or was Captain Kirk? I went with this one. And it says, I'll read it. There are risks and costs to action, but they are far less than they are far less than the risks, the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. Take action. If you're new to WordPress, learn. If you're not a coder, it's fine. Find your piece of the community. Be a part of the community, but do the work every day. I'm Adam Silver. That's where you can find me. If you want to talk more, I'll be here all day. Thanks and enjoy work camp Greenville.